of Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today we're going to preview this Saturday's HBO Boxing at the Dark Card, which is a split site double header. And the first fight we got uh, Terrence Crawford moving up to 140 for the first time, fighting Thomas DeLorme, who is a perennial contender trying to get to his to the title. And then we've got, excuse me, from New York, a all but guaranteed action slugfest between Ruslan Provodnikov and Lucas Matisse, also in the 140-pound division. Now, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know that we feel that if the name welterweight is in that weight class, there's a ton of people there, a ton of fights to be made, and there's a lot of excitement to be excited about in those three divisions. So, today we're going to focus on the junior welterweight. Or some people call it super lightweight. Whatever. Starting off with Crawford and Delorme. Taking away Rob. Okay, so in this one we got Bud Crawford fighting at 140 for the first time. And last time we saw him, he was beating the brakes off of Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns. And Ricky Burns did a pretty decent job. But it's, it's something about this guy, Crawford, who just... He just knows how to win. No, it wasn't Ricky Burns. No. It was uh, Ray Beltran. I'm sorry. That's who it was, Ray Beltran. He didn't knock him out. Who fought Ricky Burns then? He fought Ricky Burns, and then he fought no. Gamboa, Gamboa, and then he fought sorry. Beltran. We got to get our, get our people together. But either way, it was a good showing by uh, Crawford. Um, if you know anything about him, he is a switch hitter as far as uh, his stance, and he has had a lot of success doing it because it keeps his opponents off guard and when you prepare for a guy who's orthodox and he switches southpaw kind of it just throws you off yeah and that's where he's had a lot of success you can he, see he does it for long stretches like yeah seamlessly almost the rest of the fight very seamless too so that's yeah. what i'm looking for versus the lorme but i think he is a he's kind of a slow starter as you can see in the gamboa fight you saw it actually in the uh Beltran fight, he didn't really take off until like the third or fourth round. Even in the Burns fight, like he he was yeah. losing that fight at first, and then I think he switched southpaw and started winning. Same thing with the Gamboa fight, which may bode well for him in this fight because the Lorme is a quick, he's a fast starter. Like anytime you see him fighting one, um, especially when he fought, not Kareem, was it Kareem Mayfield? Kareem Mayfield. I think it was versus Kareem Mayfield and it was someone else I can't think of but Hank Lundy. Yes and Hank Lundy you can see like he started fast he showed that he was uh, very strong very fast and then all of a sudden around a fifth round maybe fourth or fifth round you can see him like slow down tremendously and it's almost like clockwork because it happens in every fight. Yeah and this Crawford is somebody you don't want to slow down late against. Mm -hmm. And I mean he just he doesn't really take punches that well, but he starts retreating, and you can busy, like visibly see that he's tired. So, I mean, I'm looking for Crawford just to, I mean, he starts slow, but to take his time with, with DeLorme. I, I don't see him trying to rush anything. No. But once he gets cooking, the guy gets cooking. I mean, he lays it on you, body, head, straights, hooks. He's walking you down. He's using angles. Um, this kid has the potential to be a future star. And he looks like he takes his craft seriously. That's and right. That's somebody who is very dangerous. Now, he's still moving up. And DeLorme has fought at, what, 147 before? I think he has. So, yeah. I mean, he's a little bit tall. He's was tall for his division, but at 140, we'll see how he puts on the size. Yeah. Coming up. So, I mean, we'll see um, versus DeLorme. Because I expect DeLorme to actually look like the physically bigger man. At least at the weigh-in, we have to see the next uh, the next day or when it comes fight time to see how much bigger, if he is bigger than Crawford. Yeah, but skill-wise, I do think Crawford's going to take it. Um, like Rob said, DeLorme tires out big time. At the time that Crawford starts to put it on, um, he may get him out of there. Um, this is a 10-round fight, so I would say probably around the ninth or 10th round. Yeah, it'll be a late stoppage if yeah. there's a stoppage. I think Crawford can get him out of there. If not, it'll be pretty much a whitewash from the second half of the fight on with Crawford landing some really damaging looking punches. Because like Rob said, DeLorme doesn't even look like he takes punches well later on in the fight. Something you can see big time in the Lundy fight. 
But um, that's it for that one. The main event. Oh boy, the main event. This one is a Slugfest fan's dream. It's nothing but unadulterated violence. Yes, those guys who do not appreciate the skill and the footwork and the jabs and the feints and the angles and they just want to see people swing punches and hit people in the face, call them up and tell them to watch this fight. So just shut up and watch. Yes, because in this, we've got the Siberian Rocky versus the Machine. And, and both guys live up to their nickname. Fight of the year candidate before it even happens. Yes. This one, ever since it was announced, everyone was like, I will be there. I'm not going to miss this. I'm going to watch that fight. You have two punchers. Two guys with some pretty decent chins. Um, I don't think Provodnikov's ever been down. He's never been down. I've seen him stun maybe a couple times. If that, mm -hmm. um, but his face, his face shreds up real easy. Yeah, but he um, keeps coming. It doesn't matter. Yeah, how. it doesn't matter. He's going to keep coming. And then in Matisse, you have a guy who um, recently, um, before the Roberto Ortiz fight, um, when he fought John Molina, had some adversity and came through that adversity to still score a knockout late. Mm -hmm. So he's got some power that carries. Um, both guys have losses on their records, but they both lost to the best of the division. Uh, we got Zab Judah, Devin Alexander, and Danny Garcia for Lucas Matisse. All three guys champs mm -hmm. or former champs at one point. Uh, Provodnikov, you got Herrera, Tim Bradley, and uh, Chris Algieri. That's right. And in the Chris Algieri fight... That one could have went towards Provodnikov. A lot of people thought that he did win that fight. Um, so he, and even in the Herrera fight that he lost, both guys' faces were messed up in that fight. But um, a lot of people just thought that Herrera's boxing and slipping and stuff was a little bit better. Which, to me, it was. I mean, right. with Algeria, he did most of his damage. Wasn't maybe all the three rounds? Yeah, the same thing with the Bradley fight. Like, it was like, Three or four rounds. Like, the rounds he won, he won big. Um, he had Bradley hurt badly. And um, he even took a knee in the last round. But in between those rounds, he got his face box off. That's right. So, in this fight, he's not fighting a boxer. He's fighting somebody that's going to be right there. That's going to touch his chin. And he's going to be able to touch their chin. As far as defense, I think I want to say Matisse has a better defense. So... If anyone's going to block a slip shot, it's going to be him. Um, this one's a tough one to call. I kind of want to go with Matisse because I think he's been in there with the better competition. He punches a little bit straighter. But Provodnikov has those hard, grown man type of punches where they just take their toll on you. Uh, Matisse is one of those guys that he has that mind-numbing power and can blast you out of there with one punch. Provodnikov has those punches where you feel them for weeks after the fight is done. And probably while you're in the fight, you're like, oh, this guy hits pretty hard. Then later on, you're like, what the hell's going on? My body hurts and I'm tired. And Matisse, you just kind of wait, what happened? You're okay, but you're like, hey, man, what happened? Hey, you got knocked out. So this, you, we got two different types of power going on here. So this one's really one that we're just going to sit back and enjoy. This, oh God, this is such an interesting matchup. Between Matisse and Provodnikov, we, I'm looking at Matisse and he's like this. 110% effort all the time. I'm coming for you. Never takes his, 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 his foot off the gas pedal. I don't care who you are. With Provodnikov, he'll take his time. He'll try to break you down. And especially with having Freddie Roach in there, I think he, um, he will let, I think he will be less, less, um, less subdued. Like he will let his hands go. And it doesn't matter what he's going to hit as long as he hits you. Right. Now, with that being said, 
when you get into that, that point where you have to step on the gas, it's interesting to see how Matisse will box. Because when Provodnikov comes at you, he kind of loses focus and he loses technique. Because instead of, of course, against Bradley, against Algieri, he does not jab his way in. He just follows you. Not cut the ring off. He follows you. So you may be going backwards, but he's just kind of plodding forward. So it's kind of interesting to see will Matisse take advantage of the ring and then try to um, throw those punches, or is he going to stand toe to toe? Because I don't really see any give in any one of these guys for any reason. Two, if Matisse wants to win, he can't fight this guy heading straight on. What I mean by that is the dude's back and head is like, one solid piece of just submit. You hit him, he doesn't, if you, if you hit him at a certain point, he doesn't do this. He does this. That's not really taking him off anything. But if you can make his neck or head snap back, then you have a chance. Because like, uh, Chris Algieri did yeah, his jab. Right. If you can, well, not straight on. I, I take that back. You don't want to, you're going to have to hit him with something he does not see. You want to make his head snap. Yeah. And I don't care what he said against Bradley, against Algieri. When your head snaps back from a punch, that is a telling punch. That is a telling blow. Yeah. Whether you may not be hurt from it or not, is neither here nor there. Enough of punching your head doing this is almost like getting whiplash from being in a car accident. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it it just depends on his punch selection. And his and his where he wants to throw those punches. And Matisse's punch selection. Yeah, Matisse's punch selection. Because I know I know Provodnikov's punch selection. Whenever, wherever, and it will hurt. Yeah. Um, as far as a winner, man, I, I was sitting here racking my brains while Warwick was talking to like really be like I'm gonna pick this guy to win, but I really can't. I do, I do want to kind of sling towards Matisse. I think he's a little bit more accurate. He punches a little bit straighter. But Provodnikov has that way of like if Matisse slows down even in the slightest, he's going to be in some trouble. This is where he will be caught, Matisse. It's if he reaches. Because you can see where he reaches and he punches from too far out. You know, from too far out, but he punches. It's the way he punches where it's almost like he throws himself off balance. Yeah. It's almost like his body is, this is his foot and he's doing this, but his foot's way back here. If he's going to be caught leaning and, and getting caught out there long and off balance, he's going to get knocked down. Something tells me there's a way that he throws that, that he, he punches that he could be countered very easily. I just don't know if Ravonikov has that speed to do it. Yeah, and that's what we're going to find out Saturday night. You guys are going to enjoy this fight. We're going to enjoy this fight. Call your friends up. Get your popcorn ready. Sit down and enjoy this fight. That's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't. You can hit us up on Facebook, Capital of Combat, Google Plus, same name. You can hit us up on our email, capitalofcombat at gmail.com. Any of those formats, you got a question, hit us up. We'll put you in the combat mailbag. And we also have our technical toolbox coming for you soon. And the granddaddy of them all, Mayweather Pacquiao, will be covering that as well. So stay tuned, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them. I don't play, I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter, Street Fighter.